Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, I welcome you back to the last lecture of this lecture series on women's writing. Today we are going to go through the future of what women's writing will be, how can we contribute to that future, what are the things that are happening right now, what are the things that will be happening or may happen in the future. All of these things taken into consideration we will start with a word called cyborg. As you can see, I have made it the first point of this presentation. Women in cyberspace. What does cyborgs mean? Let us just consider the second word cyberspace. The common thing between these two words are cyber and cyborgs. CYB. This particular three letters are common in these two words as you can see. It is mostly related to what we call as cyber and that has the relation to the internet reality. Nowadays we are very much sure that one of the part of our existence exists in the virtual plane. The plane, the reality which is around us where we have objects, we have people, we have things, the environment, the climate, outside all of that there is another plane, another dimension, another reality which we call as the virtual reality. What is the difference between our reality and virtual reality? This particular reality is created with data as you must be very much aware of that computer processes data, whatever data is given to it, it processes it and stores it. Sometimes it is also capable of analyzing the data, that's all. All the data we are giving to the computer, the computer is storing it in a pattern. The virtual drives, the internet, the Google drives, the Microsoft drives, all the drives are linked at a particular point. That common point, that common platform is the internet. We have websites which collects enormous amount of data. Therefore, they create a very similitude, a, an, a, a semblance of truth. We think that whatever data we are putting into the computer, that will become a reality. Let me give you a very small example. I am a very good person, at least that is what I think I am. But my actions in the society shows that I am not a very good person. I hit animals, small animals, I am unkind to other people, I do not listen to my parents, I do not give time to my spouse, I hate children, I get very angry with everybody. But I have created a Facebook account, an Instagram account where I write all sorts of good things. Okay, the world is a sad place and I have to do my part. I will have to uh, give donation to these organizations. I will have to take care of these people. Whoever is reading that data which is in front of them, they will think, oh, this human being is very kind. I will post pictures of uh, me playing with the dog. I will post pictures of me giving alms, A-L-M-S, alms to the beggar. I will do all sorts of things. But at the end, I know that I do not do all of those things. But in order to create an image, image, image is everything, everything is image. It is a very famous dialogue from the movie Rockstar. If you 
mm, haven't seen it, you can go and see it. You uh, see it, it's uh, quite enjoyable, entertaining and as well as deep at some level. So image, you are creating an image of yourself which you want others to know about you. In that reality, in the cyber reality, in the internet reality, your image as a kind hearted person persists. It stays there. Everybody when they access the internet, they search for, okay, let me search for Miss XYZ. Immediately those photos come up where you are being kind to people. But in reality, in this reality, in the objects, people, climate reality, you are not that kind. So there is a basic difference between virtual reality and life's own reality. Virtual reality is the thing that you are creating out of your imagination that is completely fictitious. Sometimes some people are there who post the truth but again whatever it is, it is fictitious, it is made of data that you give to the computer. Whenever there is a stage, whenever there is a step, everything has a step, every process has step. So whenever there is a process of giving data to the computer, there will be some kind of bias, there will be some kind of inclinations, I want to show my good side but I don't want to show my bad side. That is how the image that is going to be created in front of the viewers or consumers, consumers because they are going to consume that data, make it a part of their reality. Right? That is why you are or we all are very happy to post pictures on the internet one uh, any time we visit a restaurant, we visit a lounge, we visit a fair, we visit, we go to the movies, we click pictures with our friends and then we post it on the internet. Because we want people to believe that we are spending, uh, we are inside a life which is very eventful which is very nice, very happy, we don't have any kind of problems. That is a lie. People forget that others are not all the time happy. That is, that is not humanly possible. There will be life and ups and downs are a part of life. You are only showing the ups, you are not showing the downs. What does that tell anybody about you? That does not tell anybody because you are not telling them about the downsides of your life. You in that fictitious reality, only the good things in your life are getting shared. Nobody shares on the Instagram that, okay, you know, I had a quarrel with my teacher uh, or I had a quarrel with my parents. It is a very sad day for me because at that time you will get pity, pity from other people, sympathy. Oh, 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 so sad, you are having a so, uh, very sad life. Nobody is happy with that kind of pity. Everybody wants others to get jealous of them. This is something which is very surprising. I want others to get jealous of me. This mentality we are going to talk more about in the upcoming slides. So first begin with the beginning. Computers. Before computers, what were the things that we considered as media? Computer became a multimedia. Before that, what did we consider as media? Okay, we had radio, we had TV, we had newspapers. These were tools with which other people connected with other people. That is what happened. But the only thing was it was unidirectional. It went only one way. The news was developed in the newspaper offices, it was published in the papers, it was given to the public. The public took up the paper, read it and threw the paper away or stored it somewhere. Unidirectional, there was no comments. They could not tell the writer that see the news you have written, I don't think it is good, I don't think it is real. There was no feedback. There was no response from the reader's side, the consumer's side. Same thing with TV. 
you just sit in front of that box. I am sure by now you also must have known that TV is called an idiot box. The box is not idiot. It makes the person idiot who you know sits in front of it throughout the day. Idiot means somebody who does not have that much intelligence. Radio, same thing. Everybody would switch on the radio. Nowadays we have FM radios this size. But there was once a time when radios used to be this big. They used to switch on the radio and listen to it. Okay, what are the things that are being said? Oh, uh, you know, BBC is saying this. The FM from USA is saying this. All of these things they used to hear. So, only the only response they could give was to themselves. Was to their peers, their friends, their family members who were there. But those who were broadcasting, those who were creating the content of the radio or the TV, they would not have, they were not, they were completely out of reach. But computers, when computers were, uh, came into, you know, fashion, technological fashion, when computers came into fashion alongside the internet, so only computers, no. When the internet, I am sure by now, you also know that internet is a short form of international network. This is the actual word. It has been um, shortened to internet, right? So, computers came alongside the internet. What happened? We started connecting with people who are you know, miles and miles away from us in different country, in a different continent. We started connecting with them. We started, uh, wasn't it there before? Yes, it was there. So, computers coupled with the international network became a kind of communication which was faster than letters or telegrams or Morse code or any other codes, everything was instantly understood. Everything was sent multiple hundred times faster. The letter from India to USA would take at least three months to reach at one point of time. Nowadays, you just uh, send an email, it will go within a fraction of seconds. The internet destroyed the barrier of time. There was no more the constraints, the restraints of time. Everybody was able to connect with the other person instantly. This is very important. This instantly, what do we also do instantly? We also talk. When we talk to another person, it is an instant conversation. Therefore, we are now talking to another person who is uh, let's say 5,000 miles from our country, our place, we are talking to that person instantly. So, we are getting a lot of time saved. Are we really saving the time or rather we are making our workload more complex? We will talk about that in a separate section. So, what the most important thing, the two things that changed after computers coupled with internet was introduced to uh, India or any other country. One is that speed of messages changed. Another is there came a system of feedback or instant communication. Both are equally important. Feedback. Whenever I gave a news to everybody on a Facebook page, Somebody came and said, see, this is not a good news. This is not something you should share openly. You please take it down. Somebody would come, oh, this is very nice news. Thanks for letting us know. So, important things started being um, commented on. That is why you have the entire comment section in almost all the social websites. So, distribution, multiple channels and media. E previously, only the thing that you could do was write and send. Now, you can write, you can draw, you can send a video, you can send an audio file, you can even video call. You can just set up a camera, connect it to, uh, connect it to the internet, 
after uh, that person receives the call their camera and your camera is connected now you can see each other so the entire thing about distance was also compromised distance did not become any more a kind of uh, restraint upon relationships uh, scholarships all sorts of ships so these things changed the reality of our life very much now video calls are also not very reality based sometimes in order to attend a video call you immediately go and change your background do something keep these books over there do that do this or most recently you are applying a virtual background to completely hide everything that you have in your surroundings that virtual background is uh, acting like the the virtual reality which is different you may be inside a cinema hall you know people around but it is an official meeting what do you do you just apply a virtual background of a library or something and you sit there you are attending the meeting people think that you are uh, attending the meeting from a library so this kind of lie that you are telling or rather the truth that you are hiding isn't it a part of your reality that you are currently in a shopping mall or cinema hall but you are not telling that to the person who is in front of you you are just trying to create a separate kind of reality that is the virtual reality again that virtual background it is also data it is also a picture file that picture file is set in that manner so that it displays like that all right ideas of production how the content used to be produced previously the content was very formal very carefully sorted that this thing should go this thing should not go people must not be talked to like this there should be politeness whatever languages we are going to use we will make sure that it is the uh, best it is the standard language that we are using now it is you have so many options i know umpteen number of options in the form of channels that you don't care which language you are using anymore if your language is not uh, the uh, language which most people will be um, wanting to hear they will find another channel but my channel it is targeted i know what kind of audience so once it was the whole world was the audience and now you have a group a small number of people who are your audience so there has been a fragmentation of the audience the audience is now divided now the audience i am a bangla speaker so i will go and listen to bangla channels you know watch shows which are bengalis uh, somebody is a marathi speaker that person will go and switch on to z marathi or star marathi something like that somebody is a kannad speaker will do that but initially uh, in the earlier stage i am not saying this is better that is bad this is good we are not making judgments here i am saying what are the things that have changed we cannot be judges because everything all the societies when they develop their value system changes they prioritize one thing over the other it is only a natural phenomena we cannot say that once upon a time our uh, ancestors they believed that there should be four phases of life that is once uh, you are born you must be a student first then a family man uh, then you must go to the woods and stay there but that is not something that is happening to us right now we are at the same time we are a student we are also getting married we are also doing a job and also sometimes in the uh, last case the person who is a student who is a part time job uh, you know part time worker has a wife and child at home is living somewhere in isolation so that person is experiencing all the four phases of life at once 
So that kind of mentality if we bring into our society it is not going to work, we are going to fail miserably. So we need to understand that all of these things that are all of the differences that I am talking about here today, these things are only for our understanding of the cyberspace. Access to internet, okay, interactivity. Now whenever you access internet, you go to a website. Now when you go to a website, the website opens, right, there will be a window which opens. There will be some login over here, some products, let us say it is a shopping website, products displayed over here, here there will be a search bar, you search everything. What now you are going to do is you have to click, you have to click anywhere, you have to click on either login or you are going to check some products which are being displayed over here or you are going to click on search and enter the names of the products that you are looking for. So once you do that, now the website is going to search the entire database and then it is going to give you a kind of result. See these are the things that we have on our shopping platform. We are going to sell you these things, so please select from these items. That is interactivity because your click is very important. Your click makes the website decide what to do next. It is active, you are also active. You are actively contributing some input to the website, the website is now giving you the feedback. So it is programmed, the website is completely programmed, it knows what to do. You on the other hand, you may not have a definite course of action, you can go to a product, then you think okay let me create an account first. Then you might think okay let us forget creating account, let me go and search some other products, if they are good then, I, then only I will create that account. So your responses are arbitrary, your responses are not programmed, your responses are uh, then and there you know it is kind of spontaneous. Even then the website acts according to your wishes, right, so interactivity, social media women uh, as content, men as judge. This is a very popular trend that we have right now. Whenever a woman is creating a page, people are showering that page with likes and this and that. We are very much acquainted with the culture of Instagram reels. Everybody wants to be the queen of Instagram, every woman not every woman, of course I am generalizing, the maximum, the majority women who are not into academics, who do not have uh, that uh, kind of gusto to push forward, go to the research, go to the uh, uh, places of um, studies and development and science and technology. Some of them very young people, this is mostly teenagers, this is very common among teenagers. What they do is that they create content, they upload it, especially there was one software which was creating havoc at one point of time that is TikTok. Everybody was creating TikTok videos. Again I'm t when I say everybody I mean teenagers, women, women who are not doing anything in the and they are in, inside the house cooking, taking care of the kids. Women who do not have a proper job, most of the time what they were doing is creating TikTok videos, contents and getting likes, becoming influencers, that is what their dream had become, that I want to become an influencer, I want to uh, get these many likes, someday Instagram will realize, someday YouTube will realize that I am a star and will start giving me money. This idea of shortcut to success, started preying on the minds of women who were not exposed to proper kind of education. When you have education, then you make this decision, it could be understood because then you have solid plans of how you are going to do that. You do not have the basic education, instead of knowing your options, you are thinking that this is the only option that creates a problem because men who are sitting inside the social media considering themselves as judges of character and beauty, 
they will go and comment, oh you are looking so pretty, oh you are looking so beautiful. Every time they are judging you by the looks, if you are not looking pretty, if you are not looking beautiful then, then you will not get comments, you will not get likes. Now you will go to the shop and you will say my friend gets likes and comments in her video but I do not get likes and comments in my video, can you tell me why? The shopkeeper will say because you are not beautiful, you will say ok fine. Uh, what shall I do to become beautiful? You buy this product, you have to wear this you know lip gloss, that eyeliner, that uh, lipstick and then people will listen to you. Instead of first contemplating your options, your academics, your uh, studies, your area, which area do you want to go in? Don't you think that that is the first thing that one person should do, pursue education because after a time your brain cells begin to die. You cannot you know learn new things, that time we can all put on makeup. But the time for education is the first primary years, till 14 if you have learnt a new language you will remember it for the rest of your life, after 14 you will not be able to learn a new language. Even if you do learn a new language, it will only be because you are living in that country for more than 10 years. That is the amount of deterioration your brain undergoes. But women right from their childhood in today's world are you know exposed to making YouTube channels and everything, creating their own private cyberspace. I want to become a YouTuber. You want to become a YouTuber that is very good, but first let us teach you how to become a good human being, how to become a responsible citizen, how to become a person with values, ethics, culture, reliability, responsibility, rationality. Once you have gained all those things, then you can do whatever you want, but without knowing it is uh, you know it is a, a saying that is half knowledge is dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because I know that you know a certain medical procedure, it is an example, a certain med medical procedure requires that I give this medicine to the patient, ok. I know only this much, I went and gave this medicine to the patient. I did not take the patient to a proper doctor, I thought that ok I have seen that doctor prescribing that medicine. I bought the medicine from the local pharmacy, I went to the patient and gave it. You see I, I know this thing same thing happened to the other person, doctor prescribed this, you take this you will be fine. Next day the person dies, why? Because the medicine when you take the medicine you are supposed to also go and exercise so that your heart does not stop. You took the medicine, you lied down, your heart stopped. That is the problem of half knowledge because the doctor knew the risks of the medicine, the doctor prescribed that you must take the medicine, then you must go for a jogging or running so that your body is in constant motion and movement. That is how you are going to get the benefit of the medicine or it will you know cause you problem. This is just an example, there is no such drug or even if it is there I do not know about it. But knowing half about something can be as life risking as this is, that is why it is called half knowledge is dangerous. So for a woman to choose her career options, the woman first must get education even if I am sure we have seen lot of children not willing to go to the school, not willing to study, constantly distracted. We cannot blame them for their distraction. There is a very famous psychoanalyst after Freud, Sigmund Freud, I have taken his name multiple times during the lecture series. There is another psychoanalyst whose name is Carl Gustav Jung, this is the spelling the pronunciation is Carl Gustav Jung. This person said that children 
need protecting from their parents. I will write it down. Children need protecting from their parents. Why? Because in today's world, we see the child is just one and a half year old. You have started teaching it singing, you want to teach it maths, you want to teach it uh, alphabets, arithmetic, geometry. You want to teach it how to dance. The, chil the child cannot walk properly. You are taking the child to piano classes, to chess classes, to this class, that class, karate, judo, taekwondo. The parents think that I am giving my child a lot of exposure. What the parent is actually doing is killing the imagination of the child. If you do not have an imagination, you cannot be innovative, you cannot be creative, you cannot think of something which is not in front of your eyes. That is why you know physicists, those who are physicists, especially in the realm of theoretical physics, they think of some things which nobody has seen before. We have not yet seen what a black hole is. But physicists from long back has predicted, Stephen Hawking especially has predicted that what a black hole should look like. Very recently, only you know two, three years back, we got an image from one of the um, uh, space uh, centers, uh, uh, an image of a black hole, which is you know millions of light years away from us. Only very recently. Also, black hole is not uh, visible, so we have only got the event horizon. So that kind of ideas which we cannot consider in our day to day life, they, that kind of things come when we start reading, get ourselves educated instead of blindly following what other people say. And today's parents are competitive, today's parents have to go out and say, do you know my daughter, she has scored a 99 percent, I am so sad she could not score the 1 percent. This kind of competition, that is why Jung said that children need protection from their parents. The parents are killing the, their own children slowly. This is the word that I was talking about in uh, previously, right at the beginning of this lecture cyber, then I have written x, it is a kind of variable. Variable means it can be cyberspace, it can be cyber reality, cyber security, cyber any other thing that uh, you know there are actually 543 words all total which begins with cyber. That means already that our language has started making space for considering the virtual reality. Till now, we did not have these many words till now means let us say 20, 30 years back. We did not have these many words in our languages. We did not have, we did not consider cyber reality or virtual reality as a part of our reality. We considered it as something you know outside us. Nowadays that idea has changed. Nowadays virtual reality is a part of our reality. It is like you know becoming dissolving into the other for some time. So cyber is mostly a prefix, prefix that means after that you have words which are you know very common space, reality, security. You just start adding other words to it, language, dance, music, everything can take a prefix called cyber. So we have become cybernetic organisms. Why? Because the idea of post-humanism, you know, like modernism, structuralism, post-structuralism, colonialism, post-colonialism, this is also a theory, you know, philosophical standpoint. A philosophical standpoint. From here, we go towards the future, but not as humans, half humans, half as machines. Why am I saying that? Are we going to cut off half our body and stick in machines? No. Half of our reality is the reality around us. Half of the reality is the reality of the machines, the data stored in the computers. When I go and introduce myself, hello, my name is Dr. Kasturi Sinhare. 
if you want more information about me you can go and look up on my facebook and you can also search my linkedin profile my linkedin profile is this my facebook profile is this if you want to get some fun pictures about me you can also go and search for uh, my instagram handle if you want to know what kind of literature i write am i a creative writer you can go and see my twitter hr page i am standing in front of you i am the human being but i am introducing myself to the other human being as half my identity is in the computers my linkedin my facebook my insta my twitter then what is the validity of me standing in that in that situation it is just a physical body but everything that i have to do intellectually is stored in the form of data and is in the computer social media and cyborgs personal profiles in social media sites like fb insta snapchat etc now a very interesting thing in the virtual reality when you are creating your virtual identity you can you know design all of these from your side you can select your own gender if you are a boy and you feel like a girl you can select your gender as a girl and everybody in the world of virtual reality will consider you a girl they are not coming to check whether you are a physically a boy or a girl they are just expecting the behavior a girl is associated with so you can mask or change your identity in a social media site you can if you are a female you can mask your identity be a male or transgender bisexual anything you can also take recourse to a language we mostly use english in this country to you know talk to one people or the other we start with english hi how are you hi can i talk to you hi do you have a moment hello my name is this because we don't know what language the other person knows but we know that apart from the mother tongue the other person must be speaking in english because all the websites that we have been so far talking about are in english if that person is operating that website that that means this person knows english collective memory you are creating a pool of memories one memory is about your restaurant what you ate one memory is about the school play that you did one memory is about the friend that you visited last year one memory about uh, the marriage anniversary of your parents all the good memories that you have created it becomes a pool of memories this pool is becomes you know diffuses into the collective memory of people next time when that another person sees you will tell oh you were in that function right i saw your picture on facebook so now this memory is not only your memory whoever is seeing that it has become their memory also availability of option in social media like i told all these things are optional whichever option you want to pick and choose that is the option that you can choose it gives you a sense of power because in real life your actions define your identity in virtual life you can select your own identity this is a book by dona haraway we had an entire lecture on manifestos so if you want you can go back listen to that lecture once again dona j haraway she wrote a book the cyborg manifesto what happens to human beings when they are no more considered as Uh, physical human beings half of their existence is within the virtual reality the subtitle of the book is science technology and socialist feminism in the late 20th century a cyborg is a cybernetic organism a hybrid of machine and organism a creature of social reality as well as a creature of fiction fiction why because we are creating our own identity that is the place where women can be very confident in real life if a woman is not confident enough the women can hide their identity and act out they can do whatever they want in that particular virtual reality social reality is lived social relations our most important political construction a world changing 
fiction. So the social reality that we are living in, we have to maintain social relationships with people. In virtual reality, we don't have to do any of those. See, this is a kind of, uh, it is an excerpt, a quotation from that text. Another quotation, by the late 20th century, our time, a mythic time, we are all chimeras, theorized and fabricated hybrids of machine and organism, in short, cyborgs. What is a chimera? A thing which is hoped for but it illusory or impossible to achieve. We are chimeras. We have created images of ourselves in the virtual reality which we never are. Like I gave the very first example in this lecture. I told the people through the social website that I am a very strong person. In reality, I am sick, I lie in the bed all the time. So it becomes a chimera, a thing that cannot be uh, possible. It is an impossible, it is illusory, creating an illusion. See these are some other quotations. Hilary Klein has argued that both Marxism and psychoanalysis in their concepts of labor and individuation and gender formation depend, depend on the plot of original unity out of which difference must be produced and enlisted in a drama of escalating domination of women and nature. The cyborg skips the step of original unity of identification with nature in the western sense. We discussed about the nature, nurture and relation to women thing in another lecture which is uh, titled culture versus nature, nature culture debate. If you want you can go there. In the cybernetic reality, in, in case of the cyborgs, in, in case of our reality, we do not have to be associated with the nature because in virtual reality there is no nature. There is no trees, there is no natural objects, there is no climate. So in virtual reality, you cannot say, oh, women, women are like plants, women are like the earth. You cannot say that because that is not a part of the machine world. So we are skipping the step where women are in that dominating position because man takes command of the field, grows crops and this and that, all sorts of symbolism of fertilization. All these things are okay in the real world, but in the machine world, we do not have such comparisons. Therefore, we are becoming something which is, which denies all the dominance, which denies patriarchy. The cyborg is a dualism as opposed to dichotomy. Dichotomy is there are, you know, two sides of the same coin. One side is head, another side is tail. This is dichotomy. Dualism is, I cannot draw that but I hope you can understand that light is both wave and particle in nature. It is called the duality of light, the nature of light, the light that we see around us. It has both, you know, it, it is very much, people were confused whether quantum mechanics is right because quantum mechanics they claim that light is a small packets of energy called photons. So they say that no, light is particle in nature, it has particles in it. Then classical Newtonian physics, they said no, light is a wavelength, it is a wave, it is not particle. Now in the you know era of string theory and other theories, we know that light has both the qualities. It is, it behaves as a particle, it also behaves as a wave. So that is dualism. You cannot say, okay, one side of light is particle, another side of light is wave. You cannot say that. So similarly, cyborgs, you cannot say one side is woman and si another side is machine. No, the cyborg is the machine, the cyborg is the woman, both. See, these are examples of, you know, what are the things that are going on. Many of us are not aware of Twitterature. Twitter literature. See, our entire sense of writing, creating, especially because we are studying a subject called writing, women's writing, 
we don't even know these things have already started from 2006 and 9 onwards this is 2022 and beyond 10 years more than 10 years have passed uh, more than two dec almost two decades have passed we are now coming in touch with these words which has existed for the last two decades twitter literature an adaptation of various genres to social media various genres genres like fiction poetry oh i have already mentioned this various genres like poetry fiction all of these things they become uh, there is another thing also aphorisms it is a micro blogging service why is it called a micro blogging service because blogs are generally big kind of articles micro blogs they have a you know cap of 280 characters you cannot write anything outside those 280 characters including the spaces between the words so you are you know sh you have to squeeze your idea within a given space you cannot have all the space in the world that would have been something of a reality let's say 500 years ago when the population was very low now in this planet we have almost 7 billion people we cannot consider the entire planet as having a lots and lots of space the same thing is being reflected in twitter if you have to say something you have to say it within a very small space you cannot exceed that 280 characters this is only you know 2 3 years back it has become 280 initially it started with only 140 characters only 140 characters so yes aphorisms i have also mentioned poetry fiction fiction is also called in this domain as twiction twit twitfic thriller twovel that is uh, you know twitter novel twitter thriller twitter fiction all of these things are a very recent kind of words which have been developed electronic literature another very important uh, domain let us just quickly understand what it is works created exclusively on and for digital devices initially we used to read books nowadays we don't read books anymore what do we do we take out the mobile phone oh let us see yes right that is how we read books nowadays instead of you know simple pdf files or instead of simple let's say uh, image files or document files electronic fiction gives you multiple media let's see story space is a software program dedicated to creation editing and reading hypertext fiction the software is also employed to compose and organize organize fiction and non fiction planned for hard copy print what you can do is you can include sound you can include paintings you can include puzzles word games you can also include mini games like joining the dots and all of these things are a part of the story that you are writing you can only read the story once you have done all those things so it is no more something which is just to be read it is kind of an interactive medium if you want you can go and look up at netflix there is a you know episode of the series called black mirror black mirror uh, refers to the screens of mobile phones and computers and laptops you can just go i do not recall the series maybe uh, but the name of it is bandersnatch bandersnatch is a is that episode where the viewers select what kind of action happens in the um, episode the viewers can select the the protagonist is now going to kill his father another option is there the protagonist is jumping outside the window you will be asked to choose which way the program is going to go there are many choices throughout the episode all the choices are filmed you can direct what kind of episode that you want to see it's very fascinating and every time the actor is asking questions you are answering it and it is very unrealistic you feel bad at the end you think that you are controlling the life of the uh, character that is there 
Example of electronic literature is Patchwork Girl by Shelley Jackson. This has something to do with the joining of the dots and everything. It is also a part of electronic literature. Espen J. Arseth wrote in his book Cybertext Perspective on Ergodic Literature that it is possible to explore, get lost and discover secret paths in these texts. So all these points that I have mentioned over here, you can explore those points, you can get lost in those points, you can be enamored in those points, whatever the other medium that is used in that, right? Not metaphorically, but through the topological structure of the textual machinery. So the text is written in such a way that you have to go back and you know solve the puzzle, do the game, then only the text will make sense, then only the text will open, what happens next will be given to you. It is kind of a mind game that you are playing with the literature, uh, with the author or the narrator. So I will round up the lecture today with these points here. Whatever you have learnt in this entire course, apply them in your real life. Help others understand better. Spread the word of education of girls. Spread the, spread the word of empowerment of women in the good sense, not in the bad sense. You are empowering women by hitting men, that is not the way. You empower women to have that much knowledge and understanding about the society that they themselves are capable of taking care of themselves. If you want to go for higher studies and research related to the field of women's writing, you can take up any course of master degree in any university according to the national education policy, maybe in a few years master degree also will not be necessary. You can go for a four year BTEC uh, bachelor course and then you can go for PhD directly. So all of these things you will have to keep in touch with the current uh, university grants commission ideals and circulars, the state circulars that are given to you. So you will know what kind of thing that you will have to do in order to go into higher studies. You can go for masters in women's writing, masters in English literature. You can also take up other degree courses in women's writing. Uh, women's writing is this and related literature like gender studies, women's studies, all of those things. Latest writers and trend spotting because you know what kind of trend is going on because now we have discussed literature, we have discussed electronic uh, media, we have discussed new media technologies. You will be able to spot the trend. What is the trend that is uh, going on right now? Once you have start spotting the trend, then you will have a deeper understanding. If you are into writing fiction or uh, into creative writing, then this will help you immensely. At the publishing industry, if you want to join the publishing industry, you can have editorial roles, content quality assurance, you can see whether a certain text is uh, gender neutral or is it favoring the boys, it is always using the pronoun he instead of she. You must make those people around you realize that always using the pronoun he as a default is not helping. Let us start using the pronoun she, not because we want women to prevail, just want to become equal. At the corporate, you can apply for sensitizing courses, you can develop your own material, you can take materials from this lecture, you can look up the reference sections that we have given. After that, you can apply for a small maybe a week's course or a month's course. You can offer it to corporate places where women are bullied or harassed, you can ask them to read how women have been able to educate themselves, how women have been able to stop creating problems for themselves in the society. You can call it an awareness program, you can call it a sensitization program, you can even offer this to men who can be aware of these things. Speaking of women's sanitation, hygiene and personal care, all the things, all the 
uh, writers, women authors, they have been very, you know, uh, uh, they have laid special emphasis in maintaining that women must take care of themselves. Their entire existence must not revolve around the male identity, the male members of the family. They must take care of sanitation, they must take care of the hygiene and finally the personal care. Because during pregnancy or other reproduction related changes in the body, women are susceptible to diseases, especially the lifestyle diseases, lifestyle diseases like you know, high blood pressure, uh, sugar, hypertension, these are called lifestyle diseases. If women do not take care of themselves, they are going to fall sick because they are also working. So, these are a part of sensitization programs that you can go for, offer to other people and find a career path. I wish you all the very best of luck for your future. I hope that we have discussed and learned a lot from this series. I also hope that whatever things that uh, we discussed can go out into the world and help other women come up to the uh, range of equality. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Understanding oneself, understanding others, understanding society at large, understanding the nature, these are all driven by basic human curiosity. We would all love to understand why things happen, what happens, what is the final outcome, why certain things fail. These are all exercises that we perform in various domains of knowledge. Therefore, knowledge in various domains you would realize they are actually social artifacts. They have to be rooted into historical perspective, they have to be culturally salient and there would be socio-political reasons behind this. Whether you talk with respect to engineering sciences, whether you talk with respect to physical sciences, biological sciences, social sciences, that is the reason why humanities and social sciences should be understood by all of us. The knowledge that is segregated, that is divided with respect to areas, specializations, okay. how do you understand the law of nature okay, in its totality and for doing that you require the understanding of humanities and social sciences. Say for instance, if you are trying to understand the effect of a particular bacteria, a virus, any microbe, how it affects behavior, how it affects the organism, human being, you start looking at it from a pure biological point of view. If you are trying to look at a particular type of a wavelength, say for example, you are emphasizing on the understanding of the effect of radiation on human life, you are looking at things from a physical point of view, you are looking at the corresponding changes inside the body you are looking at the physiological side of the uh, understanding of the information. You are trying to understand why despite knowing the risk that is inbuilt in the process, why still human beings engage into it. You are looking at it from a pure behavioral point of view. Why society at large admire things which has full of risk, you are trying to understand things from a pure sociological point of view. Why people use particular uh, set of words to explain those experiences, you are trying to understand things from the linguistic point of view. So, there are whole lot of things and then finally, you try to combine all of them to say that what are the guiding principles in life. Then you say you are looking at life, you are looking at humanity from a pure philosophical point of view and this is what social sciences courses provide you. They provide the context to you in which you would be finally positioning 
the understanding of the knowledge in any given domain. It could be engineering, it could be sciences, it could be medical sciences, it could be social sciences stuff, it could be humanities stuff. So, con contextualizing the knowledge is what humanities social science courses help you obtain.